So, Madam wanted to speak on the on a specialty contact lenses. So, I'll start with basics. Uh, the indication for contact lens, of course, all of you know uh, from right from irregular corneas to now I introduce a new concept of eye jewelry. Not new, 2013 only I got a patent for eye jewelry lenses. So, corneal RGP. I have stopped treating corneal RGP since last 10 years. I have seen a lot of uh, corneal opacity, especially for keratoconus patients. Of course, it is still a part of a practice, uh, but I don't do it. I refer to my colleagues. Uh, irregular corneas, keratoconus. Uh, so, basically, the philosophy is you know, getting the lens fit properly do not cause much of a stiffening or flattening. But that's how you get the correction because of the TLS. And um, basically, you need base curve, power, diameter, optic diameter, material, and markings when you order the lenses. Yesterday, I spoke on orthokeratology. It's a dual geometry RGB formula contact lens um, for a temporary correction of uh, myopia. And nowadays, we use it for myopia control when we have a smaller optical zone for myopia control. For elderly people, for myopia management, those people who are afraid of LASIK or waiting for LASIK don't like glasses, they can go for a orthokeratology. And as I said yesterday, presbyopic uh, people are enjoying now presbyopic orthokeratology, so they can see distance and near both. Here, of course, uh, full prescription is required, K1, K2, HVID, topography, and the lab will make a lens for you. Coming to my favorite topic of scleral lenses, for me, scleral lens means it rests on sclera, does not touch on cornea or lipus. There are a lot of something called mini scleral lenses. They sit on a cornea, sit on a, you know, uh, limbus and extend over the sclera. I don't call them scleral lenses. They are cornea scleral lenses. It does have its own uh, advantages. So indications are keratoconus, pellucid mild degeneration, keratoglobus, keratoplasty, post keratoplasty, PMCD, Intacts, radial keratotomy, traumatic injuries, granular dystrophies. Stephen Johnson syndrome is really uh, the best population who really benefits out of this. It's a miracle lens for them. The moment you put the lens in, their head comes up, photocopia is gone, and they can uh, see clearly without any pain. The pain is gone instantly. And after the period of time, three, four years, the cornea can become clear uh, if they continuously use it. I'm not going to go into this, but basically the diameter of the scleral lens is decided by the uh, diameter of the horizontal visualized diameter, basically. So two millimeter at least on both sides. So if the uh, cornea is a 12 millimeter, two millimeter for limbus plus two millimeter for the resting. So it comes to 16. So my minimum diameter of the lens is 16.5, 16.3. Uh, there are a lot of uh, fitting sets available. Uh, all these lenses are made in US. Now there are few labs in India also, but unfortunately they make smaller lenses. Uh, but all these labs uh, do not sell their lenses for whatever reason, FDA or other issues, but uh, very few people uh, do provide the lenses here. But fortunately now, LV Prasad got the uh, CNC machines and Boston Scleral lenses are amazing. It's my baby. I was the first uh, fellow of Dr. Terry Rosenthal and I improved on the spitting set and everything. And I used to go to every Prasad every Monday morning to see patients fly back uh, on Tuesday. And today they are manufacturing amazing lenses. So basically what you're looking for in a scleral lens is no touch on cornea or on the limbus. Uh, about 300 uh, microns of clearance. Uh, you can compare with the thickness of the lens and the thickness of the cornea, uh, how, how it is behaving. You have to check for the overall 360 degree fitting properly, looking at the different case uh, for a, uh, any impingement or any uh, you know stress points. And of course, you can modify the lenses. Now you have choice of quadrant specific changes can be made on a haptic so that you can design your lenses as per the patient's uh, shape of the eyeball. Of course. There are now newer technologies. You can use OCDs and other stuff. Uh, there are a lot of uh, scanners now. Eye profile, as we call it. Uh, some like 3D, uh, SMAC 3D is now, uh, it is limited to only one lab. So if you are using that, only one lab will provide. 
but rest of the uh, legal aid provider, Kavi, uh, these are Oculus. They, you can be, you know, using the data from there and you choose your lab and most of the labs have tie up and they can make a lens for you uh, depending on your uh, data that you have given. There is a cat and software, uh, some people give you like Gaudi and you can play around with the different uh, dimensions of the lenses to get the accurate reading. So sclera lens basically works as artificial tears, gives good oxygen, it gives a protection to the cornea and ocular surface and acts as a bandage lens. Uh, there are contraindications if it is a blind eye, doesn't work, retinitis cornea doesn't work, active inflammation doesn't work. I have given scleral lenses in active uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome patient to prevent the sibling from happening, uh, but that's it. So, patient has to be monitored every day, every morning. Somebody has to take out the lens, clean it, put it back. Maybe we can put a, you know, antibiotics in that as a drug delivery system. We have put amniotic membrane in the chamber and it works wonders. So a lot of indications, again, LASIK complications, there are a lot of, initially I used to get a lot of uh, LASIK complication patient because there was a steep learning curve. Nowadays, uh, you guys have mastered, uh, I hardly see any complications, but uh, that is an indication you can have scleral lens. Sometimes it's really difficult to fit a scleral lens because of the same sinus. Yes, you can always uh, do a, uh, you know, the resurface of the ocular surface and then we can fit it. With this lens. If you look at uh, this particular young lady, usually I don't show the face, but in her case, uh, in three years her cornea improved. Nobody could make out that she had undergone Stephen Johnson syndrome. Uh, unfortunately, that lady stopped wearing lenses because now she was comfortable to save on the cost of the maintenance. In three years, she got back to the same condition. So, of course, she could improve again with the scleral lenses. Uh, all, all these difficult patients uh, can be helped with the scleral lens unless you have a central corneal opacity which is preventing any improvement in the vision. Fortunately, with scleral lenses, we have still got a good vision, but if there is a dense opacity, then maybe you can think of corneal transplant. Otherwise, uh, you, you can wait for corneal transplant. Filamentary keratitis, graphosesso disease. Graphosesso disease is becoming more and more, and more now because of the cancer uh, the blood ditch transfuse the bone marrow and after 9 months to 12 months T cell reaction causes the dry eye. But again fortunately within 5-6 hours of scleral lens where the cornea becomes clear. Congenital anesthetic patients benefit out of this. Uh, these are some of the rare cases, toxic tear syndrome we call it. Everything is normal, you can't find anything but patient is complaining of you know burning sensation. Uh, we actually did the litmus test and we found that tears are really toxic. Uh, High plus powers usually uh, up to plus 30, plus 40. You can still fit them with the uh, pediatric of patients with the regular soft lens or RGB lenses, customized. Uh, but this uh, girl had a plus 64 diameter, and we could not get a RGB lens to fix on that small cornea. So we fitted her with a fenestrated scleral lens. I started my scleral lenses with fenestrated design, thanks to Dr. Uh, Don Ezekiel, who helped me to develop these designs. Uh, and then, of course, I went to Boston uh, to uh, learn of the fluid ventilated, we call it a fluid ventilated scleral lenses. This is how the lenses are worn. You fill up with the normal saline or any unpreserved eye drops. You don't want any preservatives there, otherwise it will it will act as a drug delivery. So it will, if it is a uh, preservative, it will keep on burning the tissue. So you wear it. Unlike your RGP lens, you put the RGP lens and patient work you know, starts crying or watering, redness. Here, there is nothing. That's why I'm showing it on myself. No redness, no watering. It's absolutely comfortable. It's like an ice spa uh, because the room temperature uh, saline gives you that little cooling effect. And uh, for removal, removal, of course, you have to use these devices. You can use your fingers also, but I don't encourage them with the fingers. Fingers are only for the emergency. So you use this, uh, they call it DMV plunger, suction cup, and remover. So eyes are not always spherical. So it's always have a, you know, torsion. And then that's where you need this uh, quadrant-specific toricity. Now, thankfully, Blanchard has introduced uh, on-pit lenses in India. So I think there is one stop on this. So this is amazing lens. Uh, only thing is they're very uh, thin and small. So life is less. This is how we do the impression. This is the ultimate in scleral lenses now because you get exact centration, exact fit uh, from the impression. The lab will design the lenses 
which uh, in 99% of the time fit, fit perfectly. Uh, this is uh, one of the American doctor who visited at my clinic in Mumbai uh, when I was having my center in Mumbai. Um, so that's his wife. Uh, that we meet for the first time. No anesthesia, no nothing. You can see there is no watering. Uh, nothing. She is absolutely comfortable. Uh, within one minute, we remove this this impression. It's a special non-toxic silicone. Don't try with any other silicone that you get from uh, dental supplies. Uh, you may burn the eye. So this is. Uh, I'm going to cut short. So you get an exact impression of the. Uh, we used to keep this only for people who have uh, undergone trap surgery or any irregularity on the sclera. Uh, but nowadays, uh, which I'll be talking about, we have this free form lens uh, capacity and you can make any shape. So this is the new technology that I brought in India and the first one to bring this uh, you know, from western world to uh, this part. So it's like a, a X-wave technology or it's in the company name. So, what it does, it, it measures the whole eye's wavefront and then it is converted into a negative wavefront and that can be implanted on the lens surface. Yesterday Dr. Ketyal was talking about future of uh, cataract surgery where you can have a wavefront guided eye wells customized for that particular patient. We are here already. So I, I don't see maybe another six months or one year some company will come up with wavefront, wavefront guided eye wells. And this is really amazing. I've been practicing since last 22 years, clearly, and so I'm improving patient's vision from blind to 66, 69, and still that patient is not happy. I used to wonder what, you know, this is like from blind to 66. Patient, no, I still see a little double, little shadow, ghosting, this, that. This is the answer now. <coughs> so that's why I invested and I got this technology. So now this is available in my daily practice as well as in Mumbai. So whenever I visit India, I do see this kind of patients. So this is really, really amazing technology for patients. <coughs> Even uh, we use this technology for giving a bifocal scleral lenses. It's amazing because in bifocal scleral lenses, the lens has to be stable. Even for this HOA optics to work, the lens has to be stable. It should not rotate or uh, move around, and then only it can work. And that is where we do the impression scleral lenses. So you can take an impression, uh, send it to the lab, and lab will do the lenses. Send you the lenses with this three dots, like six dots and that is the orientation, then you do the OVIDS uh, measurement and send it to the lab and they will put that uh, correction on the lens and that's your final lens. So in two lenses, your lens is done. Uh, and it's really amazing for patients to see crisp and clear, uh, you know, six, four, six, five, six, three sometimes. So eagle vision you can get. And of course they have a capacity to offer it off also in the mm -hmm. sclerosis. So uh, I try to teach and train, uh, like uh, Dr. Tikhil was talking about yesterday. So this is one of the training program I'm conducting in Mumbai while I'm here till the month end. And similar program I'll be doing it in uh, LA. Uh, because that's how you keep on you know, transferring the knowledge. And let other people learn and they will come up with something improved or new technology. Uh, this is again my favorite subject. I was. Uh, the first ocul trained ocularist in India, set up many labs across uh, uh, big hospital, Elvita Sarshanta, Netra, name it, and I have set up a prosthetic department for them. I Now I went further, and I am the only <coughs> person who can paint on an RGB scleral lens. Of course, you do lose 30% of uh, oxygen transmissibility, but this is really amazing for patients who have corneal opacity. They cannot see, but they have to live a normal life. They have to move, move around in the society. And this is amazing. So we put, uh, you know, make a square lens first, and then we match, try to match the other eye uh, with the details. Most importantly, apart from the cosmetics, patients with diaphyx dilated pupil and area they they benefit most because then we can put a customized uh, RX lenses and create a pupil, and they can see clearly. Traumatic pupil injuries, hydrogenic traumas, iris colobomas, and area post PKB. So next in line is uh, cosmetic scleral lenses. Now keratoconus patients, we have treated them with the scleral lens, their vision is normal, they are enjoying. Now they want something dilmange more. So now you can give them a blue, green, grey, uh, you know, lenses to match with their uh, outfit and there is a demand for that. So right now it is not FDA approved in US, 
but maybe uh, soon it will happen and it will be available everywhere in the world. So this really works. Uh, uh, sometimes we use uh, black people, the whole everything is covered. There are a lot of patients uh, who have uh, unocular diplopia after the retinal surgery and don't, they don't want to see with that eye if the light is disturbed. So we put a full black uh, lenses, opaque scleral lenses uh, for them. And uh, of course, the soft prosthetic lenses are used for patients, uh, not much for the patient because the life is less, uh, but for the film industry where they, they have only one month or two month schedule and uh, it makes really wonderful, uh, you know, special effect lenses. When it's scleral scleral lens for kids, I use regularly. Um, then let's go to. This is another thing that uh, once you have fitted the scleral lens, uh, you can add a tint on it. Uh, if you notice, I am also wearing a tinted uh, spectacles. This is, uh, especially the red tint works in dyslexia, headache, migraines, uh, post-traumatic brain injuries. Uh, Ambermatic tint increases the contrast, uh, especially for the sports persons or in the night driving. And blue also works uh, in some case of uh, traumatic brain injuries. So now this can be added. Of course, you can always have a choice of wearing goggles or glasses, but when you wear glasses of say red, people look at you, people think. So it's not always possible to so roam, roam in the society with that, but you can put them on a contact lenses. So uh, Peter's anomaly also, I have been giving these clear lenses from the age of whatever they come, you know, six months, one year, and it has, we have seen little bit of improvement, not much, but yes. This is the case I was talking about, inocular diplopia post retinal surgery. Uh, we fitted her with a, you know, um, opaque painted scleral lens. You can have a tinted scleral lens, overall tint also possible. Uh, this patient had a severe dry eyes and always uh, used to complain of redness, no eye drops will help. So we fitted him with the uh, opaque haptic, but clear center. So, of course, you can manage the same thing with the soft lenses, uh, but this has more advantages over uh, soft lenses. The life is more and absolutely comfortable, less chance of infections. You can start with the fitting set and uh, send a picture, uh, select something closer, and then you can match the painting of the, try to match uh, as close as possible. Because these are artificial colors, they look different in different lighting conditions. And, uh, some of the patients uh, who have, you know, different color irises, uh, actors who needs uh, to act in a, you know, daylight as well as uh, indoors. So we give two different type of lenses. This is what I was talking about: gold and diamond eye jewelry. Uh, I got a patent for this, and uh, a lot of uh, celebrities are my patient. I can't show their pictures uh, because of the contract in DSI, uh, but uh, there are some. Uh, big names who are using this uh, lens. Of course, they use it one or two shows and then goes into their collection. My story was featured in one of the best uh, magazine, cosmetic magazine in the US, Allure. Uh, so now this kind of future, future is here. Uh, I'm not sure this, uh, so what we are doing is now replacing that gold and diamond jewelry uh, with a camera display, power, Bluetooth, etc. as a drug delivery system. Also, uh, it's in pipeline right now. So uh, it looks, it does look a little odd right now, but once it is in the movies or something, then it becomes a passion, you know. So just hold on for some time. And uh, people want to change their iris color. And uh, there was one surgeon in the south somewhere, he planted the, uh, you know, these artificial iris, and the lady got allergic reaction or something. Six months, one year, she suffered, so we had to remove. But by that six months to one year, she managed to have some relation with some distance relation on Facebook and she already was ready to get married and then she landed up with this problem. Now she says I have, he knows me as this blue colored lady and now I can't go without this, you know. So we fitted her with the eyes painted uh, soft lenses. A lot of uh, movies uh, you see all these special effects. Uh, so I'm the only one right now in India. In US there are under three people like me who provide these uh, special effect lenses for the movies, of course Halloween. Uh, special uh, effects. Uh, most of them looks zombie, <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, some 
actor and actresses use my lenses. You think it's their natural color. Wish three all four characters we made the special effect lenses. Uh, right. One one no more. Yeah. Yeah. Just one minute and I'll finish. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of movies, uh, you see in India recently, fighter movie, the antagonist had these uh, special effect lenses. Uh, we worked with Shah Khan in Film Zero and Kong Kei. Nana Patekar in Afghan, they wanted to show a, a you know, duplicate. So, a lot of movies on, and even television series, all those Nagi and all you see, <laughs> special effects lenses. Anushka uh, Sharma in this. Um, so this was a recent movie, about three weeks back, uh, he played a, a blind person, uh, Shrikant. He is a real uh, biopic, uh, one Dr. Shrikant, uh, who runs a big industry in Hyderabad, uh, born blind, and uh, he played a wonderful uh, character in that. So uh, there are a lot of wearable devices now coming up in the market, and uh, hopefully all the complications you will have to manage. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.